Good morning, everyone. We're going to do this, the last of the snow scenes. This is Cape Hedge and Cape Ann. Uh, we're going to start by wetting the top of the paper so we can do a wet on wet sky. Putting a little cobalt blue on the top, a little rose and a really yellow on the bottom. You can use a towel here if you want to lift out some clouds. Uh, some cloud activity. All right, now we're gonna put the water in. The water, the first layer of the water is just a, a uh, Windsor blue. And what you wanna do is leave that little white space between these two shapes so that you can go back later and put the background land in, whether you wanna put the buildings in. You wanna save that beautiful white uh, light, light spot. I'm putting a little rose on it. I'm going to let that dry and then do the snow. Just a little rose to brighten it up. All right, I just mixed a little blue into the uh, gray that I had on my palette here. So this is just a, a warm gray. Uh, you know, you can use ultramarine or you can use cobalt blue with a little touch of that quinacridone sienna. And as you come to the center here, uh, for some reason, the light, you know, the sun is hitting this centerpiece, uh, making it a little warmer. So it's I'm leaning it more towards the quinacridone sienna. And I, I'm, I'm making it look like a beach back there. You know, it look like sand dunes. But you can, you know, if you want to do buildings or, you know, any shapes you want, it's just off in the distance. And you can see I got cooler on the right side. All right, now we'll do the snow. Uh, so you want to watch out for that nice piece of light in the middle, but uh, essentially it's all ultramarine and then I'm going to throw some uh, Windsor blue into it to brighten it up. So you can kind of paint the shapes, you know, I, I like to throw the, throw the paint at it because it leaves some nice white spaces in there uh, that you, you know, would take forever to paint around. Uh, we just want to watch that, uh, like I said, that white, that piece of light in the center. But for now, we'll just put this blue in there, and it's ultramarine. Uh, and then you can throw some uh, Windsor blue into it, you know, and just get the shapes covered where all the shadow is. This is all shadow on the snow, and it's all, you know, little bumps and some modular shape so uh, be careful here you're going around that light uh, you're trying to soften the edges you don't want too many hard edges the snow is always nice and soft so you can see I'm going I'm staying away from where that piece of light is hitting that little mound of snow in the middle throwing some Windsor blue into there and the, the, by throwing it you know you get some nice uh, gradations of color, which is beautiful. And then you can take a towel here and, and just tap out, you know, lift out some uh, some hills, you know, the little, little tiny bumps and hills that are in snow uh, that show you the variation of, of the colors and so forth. All right, so just work on that, building that with your, with your touch. All right, I'm going back now, the water's dry, just taking the same Windsor Blue with a fairly dry brush here, and I'm just putting in some streaks of current. You know, it's where the, the wind is moving that water. Then I'm going back with a wet brush and softening all the edges, moving it along. And you can work that as much as you want. You almost can't put too much. All right, ultramarine and quinacridone sienna here on this bush and on the rocks. They're, it's all the same. Uh, I'm leaning the bush towards the quinacridone sienna so it's nice and warm. All right, so going in very, uh, very heavy with the paint. Uh, you, you need to get some darks in there, you know, so don't be afraid to get some pigment on your, on your brush. All right, and get the nice shape. I'm leaving a few holes in the bush where you can see through or where there's a little snow on the bush. Then on the edges, you know, you take a drier brush and just sort of push that paint. I'm using with the quinacridone sienna on the edge to make it warmer. 
the, uh, the sun is kind of hitting the top of these bushes, so uh, just pushing it out like branches and twigs and so forth. Get a nice round shape on it. And look at the photo, see how high that bush goes. All right, now we're getting into the rocks. The rocks are basically the same color. Uh, you can see, you know, the light is hitting one side of these rocks. So uh, I'm making that side warmer and the other side darker. So pushing it more towards the quinacridone sienna on the light warm side, and then back towards the blue on the, on the cooler side. And get those shapes blending together. The rocks are actually going under that bush. So the bush is sitting on top of the rocks. And one thing you don't want to uh, lose here is this beautiful diagonal of rocks. It's one of the things that really attracted me to this scene where the, these beautiful dark warm rocks in contrast with the light cool snow uh, is leading you right into that painting. So take your time and, and just, you know, paint, paint these shapes uh, where the rocks are uh, forming, but where, you know, some of the snow is obviously covering, covering it. Okay, you get some bushes here in the background. That line where the snow and the water meet, you want to go along that and push, uh, you know, push some bushes and, you know, little pieces of a, a bush or a shrubbery or a little, even just grasses or a piece of rock that separates that that white snow from the from the blue water and it really pushes that water back and it you know pulls that piece of land forward because of the dark color okay the warm and dark always come forward but right, we'll get back to these to these rocks now that edge is is up against where the light is hitting so you want to pay attention to that the rock is actually in shade, and then the snow is in the white. Okay. All of these shapes uh, are working for your diagonal there, leading you right into the painting, right towards that bush. Just take your time, you know, study out the photo, and you don't have to paint you're not painting a portrait of the rocks, but you get, you get, get inspiration from the shapes and what you see there. Vary the shape between the warm uh, quinacridone sienna and the ultramarine. So you have both warm and dark on those rocks. So you can already you can see how that that diagonal of the rocks is really strong, really pulls you right into the painting. Nice heavy paint here. Don't don't skim. You know, don't make it wishy washy. This is opaque opaque color. These are strong, beautiful dark or warm rocks in them. Get them in there. I'm going back and just, just touching up a little bit of the shrubbery here, getting some activity going. And then, uh, okay, we'll finish this off. This rock covers the whole corner here, so it's nice. Really lead you right, look at that, it leads you right into that painting. Okay, uh, all right, so now you wanna take just some dark and do some filling in here. Little pieces of rock peeking out of the snow here and there. A little bit there and a little bit on the right as well. Just study your painting and see, you know, you look you're just looking for balance here. The strength is in that diagonal, so you don't want to do anything that draws too much attention away from it, but just pieces of stone and rock peeking out of that. 
You can add that snow. Okay, now uh, I'm just going in with a little more of the a blue. It's a mix of ultramarine and Windsor blue. Just adding a little more uh, emphasis on the shadows and. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a beautiful scene overlooking that ocean uh, with the snow. Very nice. And this will be our last snow painting. All right, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you again very soon.